One of the interesting characteristics of Russia's build-up on the Ukrainian border is the large number of Iskander missile launchers that are featured in this build-up. The Iskander is a system capable of launching both a short-range ballistic missile and a longer-range cruise missile. This matters because long-range precision strike capabilities have a critical role in the Russian way of war, both at the operational and the strategic levels. At the operational level, they support a Russian effort to deliver shock across the depth of an opposing society by targeting critical national objects. This can be infrastructure such as, such as power grids, uh, key urban nodes, transportation networks, and those sorts of things. In tandem with stay-behind forces and, and uh, non-kinetic means of disruption such as cyber attack, uh, precision strike capabilities ensure that any Russian ground advance is accompanied by a wider societal disruption that effectively paralyzes and slows down an opposing society's capacity for response. Uh, in, it, in any Russian intervention in Ukraine, then, it's likely that we're going to see these Iskander missiles being used on a large scale against Ukrainian targets. The Iskander and Russia's long-range uh, cruise and ballistic missiles, however, also have a secondary role which is deterring intervention in what Russian doctrine describes as local wars on its periphery. In essence, the threat posed by long-range precision strike capabilities and perhaps even demonstrative salvos against likely interveners may be one means by which Russia attempts to slow any coalescing of a hostile of a coalition that might roll back its activities in its near periphery. In other words, uh, long-range strike capabilities are a critical component of both Russia's operational approach to warfare and its strategic approach to managing escalation in local conflicts on its periphery. Russia has a pretty a multi-domain system of strike capabilities that can be mobilized at fairly short notice. Now, it is true that unlike, for example, China, Russia probably lacks the reconnaissance system needed to target moving assets at very long ranges. However, in many ways, that's tangential to the Russian approach to using its strike capabilities, which is a much more counter-value oriented approach. It's much more about targeting critical civil infrastructure, either to paralyze an opponent's societal response to uh, aggression or to slow down its political decision making should the opponent be a more distant uh, nation or coalition contemplating intervention in a conflict on Russia's periphery. One of the uh, consequences of these tactics, of course, is that they will exacerbate the humanitarian consequences of any Russian incursion into Ukraine. Uh, depending on the fragility of Ukraine's critical national infrastructure, and uh, they may also significantly impede uh, a, an effective and adroit Ukrainian response to an incursion on its own border. Further afield, uh, the Russian approach to utilizing strike assets, either the threat of them or the localized use of them against more distant potential interveners uh, uh, on the one hand poses a real threat to NATO critical national infrastructure and could also lead to uh, cycles of miscalculation and escalation if the Russians for example misjudge how a demonstrative salvo or the positioning of certain strike assets might be received in Western capitals. It's highly likely that they will use precision strike capabilities against Ukraine itself if should uh, conflict break, uh, break out between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, with regards to uh, use against uh, potential interveners further afield, uh, that, that's perhaps more of a subject for debate. It's but potentially the case that the Russians will try to posture their assets rather than using them directly as a means of localizing a conflict and deterring any intervention.